Okay, we're back live here inside Oracle Open World 2012, day two. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage. Um, inside the trenches, on the show floor, inside the booth here at QLogic, who's sponsoring us here. Uh, great support for QLogic. This is the QLogic Cube this week, because they're giving us their booth. Want to shout out to QLogic. Day two is underway. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com, and joined this week by Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.org, top analyst firm, open research, uh, new, new way of doing research. Wikibon is powering the way and uh, exciting for day two. Dave, so uh, day two we're starting, uh, getting kicked off, got a big set of interviews, but the day started off with a real kind of somewhat quiet bang. Joe Tucci took the stage. Um, some were uh, discussing whether Joe Tucci would be punching back, but Jeremy Burton took the punch for him. Um, so what's your assessment of Joe Tucci's keynote and uh, Jeremy Burton, the uh, EVP of Products and Marketing? Well John, I got an email this morning from one of our followers saying, geez, I'm kind of surprised DMC has a keynote at Oracle Open World given that they're really not good friends with Oracle. And I laughed and explained to him, look, EMC has to be here. They have to pay a million dollars for the right to, to address the 45,000 Oracle customers that are in the audience. And uh, I thought Joe Tucci was very respectful, but. He, he and Jeremy Burton, I thought, put together a good counter to Ellison. They didn't counter punch uh, with regard to being in your face, but what they did is they talked about their strategy and their vision in a very crisp and credible way, talking about their cloud vision, uh, their cloud trust, transformation, big data, you know, the typical EMC that we know well, because we've been covering them that well, but the, the, the traditional Oracle customer may not know as well. The one jab that Jeremy Burton did take was he said that you haven't heard much about openness and flexibility this week, or flexibility and choice this week. So that was a jab at, at Oracle, but uh, other than that, they were pretty respectful and I thought did a very good job. You know, what's striking about Joe Tucci um, and comparing and contrasting him to Larry Ellison, both uh, tech titans, captains of industry, you really see the contrast. You know, you go back to 2009 when Larry Ellison went on a rant at the Churchill Club about cloud computing. In a way, he was right uh, at that time, but now he's fully on cloud. And he's, you know, he's just punching hard, he's a competitor, and we know all Larry, but Joe Tucci comes out as a statesman. He really showed class. Um, Joe Tucci uh, stood tall, and you know what? He did not want to go sling in the mud with uh, Ellison, so I thought that was a cool move. But it's just a striking difference between Joe Tucci, Dave, and Larry Ellison. What was your perspective on that? Did you agree with that? Did you um, see the respect there, but yet the, the um, statesmanship of Joe Tucci? Yeah, I think it was absolutely the right move. It was, um, as I say, crisp and cogent and very credible. And uh, I think, in a way, it was kind of funny watching Tucci geek out a bit, you know? I mean, you know, Tucci knows, he sees all these technologies, investing in all these companies. The guy's very conversant in the whole, you know, the, the, the new trends that are coming on. He talked about the software-defined data center, and, um, which is their, their term and, and VMware's term. You know, we call it software-led infrastructure or software-defined infrastructure, but he talked about what that is. He did a heavy dose of flash, which of course this audience it will, it will resonate with this audience because of the performance impacts of Flash. So I thought he did a really good job, and I mean, Joe Tucci's in the driver's seat. You remember at VMworld, he was up on stage with essentially all his competitors, Michael Dell, Tom Georgians, and he was like the godfather. <laughs> Joe Tucci's the godfather of the IT industry. But he's excited, you can see the passion. I mean, he, his passion comes out um, in, in a couple ways. One, we all know he's not retiring anytime soon, or you know, who knows what that's going to happen. Well, that's what he told and, you on the, the he told your me, mini cube. Yeah, well, I got a little private one-on-one -on -one with Joe Tucci at uh, EMC World. But you see him on stage here, and I think at the end of his presentation was a very notable. He basically said to the crowd, you folks are in the right place at the right time. And Joe brought a little bit of, hey, I've been there, done that, seen a bunch of uh, industry cycles before, and this is a unique time in history. And he was truly passionate about the fact that this is a unique time in the business, on, in all the theaters. Technology theater, the business theater, and also the market theater. So, you know, Joe Tucci essentially saying, go to work. And then Jeremy Burton came on to kind of kind of mop up and take care of some of the you know the specifics that they had to punch out in their messaging. Obviously, the the total sales job of the you know, human face of big data. I mean, Jeremy Burton spent I literally counted six minutes on that one piece selling the EMC campaign, uh, and then going into a, a, a bunch of examples. So EMC's all in on this face of big data. Let's see how that materializes. 
Personally, I think they could have used some better use cases. I'm not too sure Great Clips is a good example. I would have gone more specific around changing society and real business benefits rather than getting a better haircut and uh, yeah, you know, the finding big, out where the taxi lines are. The big data examples I thought were kind of light. They were fun, but they weren't really big data. So uh, I'm, we're going to ask Jeremy Burton, who's going to be on there today at 1220, uh, Pacific time. It's a first step though, Dave. It's um, a first step in, in at least moving outside the geek world of, hey, I have a zillion clusters, I can boot this up on the cloud. We've seen that at Google I.O., for example, with MapR, for example. So a lot of people go on speeds and feeds. Jeremy's taking that first baby step to the real world and say, bring in the big data message and the Kool-Aid to the masses. So one, props on that for Jeremy Burton, uh, big fan of the campaign. Um, but he did kind of a sales job up there, so we're going to, Hit him up on that. Well, I mean, you know, you got to balance uh, the geek stuff with the, the human interest. Now, we've heard a lot this week about Flash. For as long as this computer's been around and disk drives been around, disk drives have been the bottleneck because disk drives spin, they're electromechanical, and everything else is running at silicon speeds. So as Flash permeates the I.O. stack, networking becomes the real key focal point. And that's why we've been hearing so much talk about software-defined networking, and we've got some major emphasis this morning, uh, John, with our guests on networking. We have Lee Doyle coming on. Lee Doyle, for a long, long time, probably the better part of two decades, was IDC's number one networking analyst. He spun out, he started his own firm, uh, Doyle Research. He's coming on, he's going to give us his perspectives on the networking industry. We also have QLogic coming on. John, they have a project called Mount Rainier, which sort of blends the networking fabric with Flash to, to allow people to actually share Flash at synchronous distance, so that's going to be kind of an interesting segment. We have two uh, Oracle, uh, previous Oracle executives, Jeremy Burton, obviously the uh, EVP of products and marketing at EMC, ex-Oracle. Also we have um, Deidre Pende from CEO, founder of Nutonix, another Oracle. And what's interesting about uh, uh, the Nutonix CEO, Dave, and, and co-founder, is that he actually worked on Exadata's business. He built that engineering team, so we also that's going to be a good, good segment. We also have, uh, that, that is going to be a good segment. We also have Gary Ornstein coming on at noon Pacific time. Uh, now for those who don't, know, who don't know Gary Ornstein, he was a writer at, uh, at GigaOM. He's now the VP of, of, of products at uh, Fusion IO. But more than that, Gary just knows the industry really well. He's, he blends technology and business. He's, a, he's always one of our, uh, our best guests. And then we've got a segment on a topic that really hasn't got a lot of play thus far. Larry Ellison talked a little bit about it on uh, Sunday night. Jeremy Burton touched upon it just in a little, very brief way as did Joe Tucci, but data protection. Back of recovery, as you recall, a couple years ago, EMC paid $2.5 billion to acquire data domain. So we're going to hear from those guys and uh, talk about data protection in the world of Oracle, which is obviously an important topic. We got um, other notable guests, uh, the 10Gen president, uh, Max, uh, who, 10Gen is a company that makes MongoDB. This is the hottest, the fastest rising um, analytics database, full package, competes with Hadoop, and they're growing absolutely crazy right now. And very popular in the data scientists, Dave. Our research has shown that MongoDB has surpassed Hadoop in terms of popularity um, in term with data scientists. Uh, but I, in the IT pros category, Hadoop, uh, is more popular than uh, ten, uh, Tengen's MongoDB. Oh, so you're, you're saying you run, you're not running MongoDB with, with uh, Hadoop? You're, is it an H-based competitor? Or is it it's an H-based competitor. competitor. It's a whole different system, a different stack, but you know, works oh, So you're Hadoop. not running it on Hadoop? No. Okay, so yeah. it's a, another fork. We have a C, <laughs> no, it's just a separate, it's a separate opportunity, right? Just like uh, Cassandra, React, all these other databases. Yeah, so but Cassandra run on Hadoop, right? Uh, we have Violin Memory Systems. We have Bill Schmarzo, the, the, the uh, Dean of Big Data, the dean coming of on. Big Data. Uh, he's a CTO for EMC, he's out in the field, he's an architect, um, and he's talking to customers. So we're going to have a customer perspective uh, this day. We're going to have some great EMC guests on. We're going to have some great Oracle architects and, and on. And don't forget, we got Larry Ellison coming on. Um, yep. He actually won't be in the hot seat here, but. We will pipe through his uh, keynote. I just got a text that said he might be swinging by later, yeah. so watch siliconangle.tv for Larry Ellison, he'll be here. We have a seat for him, and uh, Larry, as soon as you get down here, let us know we're in the 1900 section of the floor, Moscone South, um, looking forward to having Larry Ellison on theCUBE on Silicon Angle TV. Yeah, so, um, so that'd be good. We'll definitely uh, broadcast this keynote, have some commentary, and maybe he'll come by afterwards and talk, talk to us about it. Um, so his keynote starts at uh, about 2.45, 2.30-ish? This afternoon will be- I think 
Three thirty. Three thirty. We'll be carrying highlights, and of course, um, epic commentary, independent analysis here with SiliconANGLE Wikibon, um, live tweeting. We're going to have some. Uh, we're going to go up against Ray Wang's tweets, um, like we always do. He's got a point of view. We have an angle. Um, we're going to have fun with, with Ray and all the people on the Twitter stream. Really, well, that's where the action's done. That's where the crowd will be do, curating the commentary. Uh, we'll be there leading that, and also providing video commentary and breaking analysis exclusively here on SiliconANGLE Wikibon. So, uh, buckle up for a great day in day two. This is theCUBE on SiliconANGLE.tv, SiliconANGLE.com, with Wikibon.org providing the great analysis. This is, would not be possible without QLogic support. Um, and all of our sponsors who allow us to come here and do our great independent analysis. So we appreciate QLogic. Come to the QLogic booth, tell them that John sent you and you get a 10% discount on Fiber Channel cards. 20%. 20%, I think you go for okay. 20. Take 20% discount. You know that Papa John's ad? Yeah, you get a 20% <laughs> discount. Just say, John Furrier sent me, I want a Fiber Channel card, I want some switches, uh, FCOE, they have it all. QLogic's awesome, I want to thank QLogic. We'll be right back with great coverage here live at the SiliconANGLE.TV's Oracle Open World from the show floor. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs>Cube is this conceptual box, if you will, and we bring people inside of the cube and then we share ideas. The cube is a comfortable place. It's a place where people feel happy and are happy to share their knowledge with the world. And uh, we're happy to, to be ambassadors of, of that knowledge transfer.